Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Um, so today, I felt really compelled to film this, which this is going to be a recap of the last two and a half years of my life. Let's just dive into this. <laughs> okay, so if you aren't familiar, uh, my name's Kelsey and uh, my husband Anthony and I have been married now for a little over three years. We got married March 7th of 2015. We're best friends. He is my soulmate through and through. Um, and one of the biggest reasons we knew that we were the one for each other was our, was our desire for children and how much we wanted to be parents. Um, that's just one of the many things that we loved about each other. Like most couples, I'm gonna rewind to the beginning when that, you know, that day comes when you're like, okay, we're ready to build our family. So like I said, we got married in March of 2015 and we decided December 1st, 2015 to toss the birth control in the trash. And I remember that day really vividly because of course we didn't want to tell anybody that we were like trying to conceive like we were ready but of course being as close as I am with my mom I remember specifically sending her a snapchat video of me tossing my birth control in the trash um, our goal was to be pregnant and announce to the world that we were pregnant by our first wedding anniversary so once we ditched the birth control um, things started things went wrong oh man this is hard to explain okay i just want to put into context really quick that we've been trying for two and a half years and i'm fully aware that a lot of people try much much longer um but when i started my channel it's kelsey's life my intention was never to become an infertility or trying to conceive channel I had actually been on YouTube for many, many years before that on another channel and I made It's Kelsey's Life because I wanted to just document our life and the very first video I ever made when it comes to fertility, I posted in August of 2016 and I had less than 1,000 subscribers. I had a couple hundred subscribers um, and I posted that infertility and miscarriage story and things just took off. And now here we are, 11,000 plus subscribers and growing, and I know it's because of this niche that I found myself in, and I'm so grateful for the community that's come of it. And I just wanted to preface that before, in case anyone's wondering why I'm filming this, um, that th that's why. I feel like the subscribers have grown. I've continued to document this journey, but a lot of you guys come in and you might not be aware of where this started and how things got to where they are now. So I encourage you to sit back, relax, grab a beverage because I'm going to dive in and I will warn you that if you are triggered by surgery or death or um, hard times, then maybe you, should, maybe you shouldn't watch this. This is something that a lot, a lot of people deal with and a lot of people are so ashamed to talk about it. So I never knew that when I made that very first video in August of 2016 that I would somehow become this advocate on this platform for this condition, for this disease, whatever you want to call it. So I, I feel a responsibility to share from the beginning where this all started and how we got to where we are now and I don't plan to film another one of these videos. I told myself at two and a half years I think I'm gonna give everyone the full story of where we've been and what we've been going through and if another two and a half years goes by and we get to five years I'll make another one of these but I know and pray that I do not make it through I do not go through another two and a half years of this like, do you know what you can do in two and a half years? I could have gotten a master's degree. I could have backpacked Europe. I could have, I could have done so many things. But this has been my life that I've been breathing and living for 
a long time. And let's just jump into the beginning. So like most couples, we started just like everybody else. We ditched birth control. We're ready to get pregnant. <laughs> and things were not right from the get-go. I did not get... My cycles did not ever return. After I took that, plus, that last placebo line of birth control pills, had a period, I never got one again. And it was... That was December 1st, 2015 that I ditched the pill. And by March of the following year, I knew something was not right. Um, it just, it did nothing, it, I felt off. Nothing felt right, nothing was working. You can't really actively con try to conceive if you don't even know what your body's doing. So, like most people, I, w I sought out my OBGYN, told her the problem, and this is where things got started. And she told me, oh, you just might have amenorrhea. A lot of people don't get their periods back after birth control. Fine, cool, whatever. Gives me progesterone. Tells me a period will start 10 days later, whatever. It doesn't work. Um, so then she suggests, well, let's do another round of birth control and then let's, let's put you on some Clomid. And at the time, I was so ignorant to what anything in fertility was. So I was like, well, what is Clomid? She's like, oh, it's gonna make you ovulate. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. But now I look back and it bothers me because I didn't ask, well, why am I not ovulating? Like, why do we have to jump immediately to a drug that's gonna make me ovulate? Shouldn't I ovulate on my own? Isn't that like what women do on our own naturally? But of course at the time, I just wanted a baby and I didn't care to think about why my body wasn't working, I just wanted it to work. So we did a round of birth control and we did our first round of Clomid and it happened. I got pregnant the very first month I took Clomid. I didn't understand how it worked, I just knew it worked. I got pregnant. And I got to enjoy pregnancy for about two weeks. Um, it was bliss. Ignorance was bliss at the time. I did not have to try that hard. And I was pregnant and I have footage of me telling my family that we're gonna have a baby. And I've never shared this footage and I, I know how much this footage hurts my family, but because we were so happy and just so ignorant at the time, I say ignorant a lot because ignorance was bliss then. We didn't understand. We didn't know a lot of things that we know now. So yeah, the footage is hard to watch because the feelings in the moment were really blissfully happy. So I'll share that now. Hi guys. So today is a super special day. What's today? July 15th? Today is Friday, July 15th, and today is the day we are finally telling my parents and my sister that we are pregnant. I have kept this secret for a week, and I've been dying. So this is kind of how we are telling them. They're going to come in to the entrance of our house because they're coming over for dinner, and they're walking into this. Prayers answered. That one says, I heart auntie. And this one has a good Bible verse on it. What's it say? It says, you are the one we prayed for. And then I have a bunch of my positive pregnancy tests uh, taped to it. So yeah, that's what they're gonna walk into and I'm gonna film their reaction, of course. And here's the baby daddy. Hello. We're excited to tell you, Mom and Dad. So excited! Woo! Woo! I literally had to change shirts because I sweat through my other one. I'm nervous. Okay, they're here. Oh, your dad's first. My dad's first. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
to enjoy being pregnant for about two weeks. Um, and I <sighs> experienced my first miscarriage on July 18th, 2016. Um, I, it was a natural miscarriage. It happened at home. That happened, and my doctor was like, you know, they say, they, they, they say this, and I hate this phrase, but she was like, well, at least we know you can get pregnant, so let's just, let's do some clomid again. And yeah, anyways, that miscarriage was a natural miscarriage, and we, we jumped right back into things after everything had passed. We watched my HCG levels drop. Once we were good, um, it was time for some more clomid. So, I mean, in my mind, I was like, well, great, this worked last time, so this will definitely work again. So we tried, I want to say, four more rounds of Clomid. So we did five total, I think. Um, and uh, I never responded to Clomid again. I did not ovulate. Um, nothing happened. And, um, yeah, it, it did not work. So I was getting really fed up because Clomid's side effects are awful. So I asked, I was like, well, is there another kind of like medication we can kind of use to maybe make this better? And she was like, oh yeah, let's switch you to Fermera or Letrozole. You may know it as one of those names. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, let's do it. So I have footage of me trying Fermera for the very first time. This is my first, this is my review on my first cycle of Fermera. And I just want to tell you guys how it went, what you can expect and what happened for me. And I got pregnant again on my second round of Fermera and it was amazing and I shared that with the world really early because we had already experienced a loss and I had felt at the time, not that my feelings then weren't valid, but I had felt at the time that we had worked so hard for that rainbow baby and in the grand scheme of things we did i mean we had at that point been trying for over a year um and it wasn't easy to get there i mean those drugs they hurt they hurt your body they don't feel good um and so we did it and i shared it really early oh my gosh because I was so scared that we were gonna lose this baby again and I needed all the prayers we could get. So I, I shared it on YouTube, I shared it on my personal Facebook page, like with the world, like they knew. I filmed me telling Anthony. That is one of my most popular videos to date, is telling Anthony that I was pregnant. It was one of the happiest days of my life, I was getting to tell him, we did it, we did it, we're not going to lose this one, we've already lost one, there's no way, there's no way we'll lose another, but that doesn't happen, it's not going to happen to us. We saw the heartbeat of this baby, which we didn't get with the first one, and I have amazing footage of that. See that little flicker right here? Guys? Yeah. That heart's just going. Wow. That is so cool. That's awesome. So we saw their heartbeat. We saw them moving around. It was just bliss. And I'll never forget that my second appointment when I was 10 weeks, no, before my second appointment where I would have been 10 weeks, three days. I was, uh, so three days before I would have been exactly 10 weeks pregnant, I borrowed my cousin's Doppler and I listened to Barry's heartbeat. And I could 
here and I had, I don't want to call it like a bump, it mostly just looked like bloat, but my body was starting to change and I could hear the heartbeat on the Doppler, I could find it. And I don't know if I've ever actually said that on my channel that I could hear the heartbeat just three days before. When I went to my appointment at 10 weeks, three days, I went alone because that's how confident I felt. I told Anthony, don't worry about it. You don't have to come to this one. I'm probably not even getting an ultrasound. She'll probably just do the Doppler and we'll be on my merry way. Um, and that was exactly how it started. I went in. Uh, we talked about like what kind of testing do I want to have done? Do I want to do genetic testing? All these things. Just blissfully happy. Um, and she's like, well, let's listen to you real quick on the Doppler before you go. And she listened, she listened, and I was so confused because I could find it so fast just a few days before. And then she was like, okay, I'm not finding it. It could, she, he or she could be hiding or like behind a vein. I don't know. Let's just get you a quick ultrasound just to, you know, double check. I was like, okay, cool. Yay, I get to see my baby today. Like, I'm so excited. Um, and this was the first ultrasound I had had that was like on my tummy and not transvaginal. <laughs> and, you know, she puts the gel on. The lady asked me, how far along are you? I'm like, oh, about ten and a half weeks. And everything changed so fast. Her demeanor changed really quick. She put the gel on, put the ultrasound on my stomach, and I could see it. Like laying at the bottom of my uterus like it was flattened but there it was really graphic she moved around just trying to get different angles I don't know why it was very obvious from the second you looked at that monitor what was happening and she said she was sorry and that was it she took me to my doctor's office and we cried and never in my life had I wanted my husband or my mom in my life because I had to drive myself home after that and I think this was on a Tuesday I think it was a Tuesday I scheduled a DNC for that Friday I know a lot of people have their opinions on DNC's um, but at that point I was so shattered and heartbroken. I just wanted it to be over as fast as possible. Um, I'd already passed a baby at home naturally. I didn't, I don't want to do it again. I just wanted, I just wanted it over. I had a DNC. Um, it was, a, it was a piece of cake. Like honestly, it was easy. And I then shared it with all of you guys here on YouTube. What happened? <coughs> I was thinking if I tell from the title that I uh, miscarried again. So things got worse after that, believe it or not. So my that miscarriage happened in March of 2017. And I waited and waited and waited for a cycle to return wasn't returning and I told my doctor I'm like something's wrong something's wrong and she she didn't know what it could be so she tried progesterone we tried birth control nothing was getting a period to come nothing that's not normal like even synthetic hormones should make you have a something something so I remember vividly it was the 4th of July weekend of 2017. I was in the most excruciating pain I've ever been in my life, in my lower stomach. And I kept telling Anthony, something's wrong. It feels like I should be having a period right now, but it, all, it feels stuck. It's stuck. It can't come out. And my stomach was hard as a rock. And I couldn't walk. I could barely breathe. And this, this was the point where I was like, something's wrong. We went to the emergency room. I had to have an ultrasound done, I had a CAT scan done, I had all kinds of things poked and prodded at me and they could not figure it out. 
I told them, I was like, I had a DNC, I haven't had a period since, I swear this is my period trying to come out, it's stuck, it's stuck, something's blocking it, it can't, it can't come out. And it's crazy how much in tune you become with your body when you're going through infertility, like you know, like by the time you've gone through fertility treatment so many times, you know which side you ovulated from because you can feel that little twinge in that ovary. And I was so in tune with what was happening in my body, I'm like, I know this is what's wrong. And I went and I told my OB and I told her I went to the emergency room and I told her what I thought was wrong. And I asked her, I was like, have you ever heard of Asherman syndrome? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, I think I have. And she's like, there's no way. And I'm like, you don't know that. I'm like, can you test me? And she's like, no, I can't. And I said, okay, well, I think it's time that we part ways. Eventually she told me she there's nothing more she can do for me. And I said, well, that's okay. Cause I'm going to see a reproductive endocrinologist in August. Bye. And I essentially broke up with my doctor. I told her, I was like, I need someone that can help me, that can find the cause of these problems, and that is willing to take the time to listen to me and find, find solutions to the issues I'm having and not just mask it with Clomid and Fermerin and progesterone and birth control. I need answers. So I took it upon myself to find the best reproductive endocrinologist in Kansas City I could find. And I in my opinion, I think I found him. I had my first consultation with him in August of 2017, and within one week of seeing him, I had a diagnosis of PCOS. And then within a month of seeing him, I had a diagnosis of Asherman syndrome. <laughs> Two of the things that I swore up and down, I was like, I have these things, and my doctor wouldn't look for them, and I had them, I knew. Just from doing the research that I did on my own about my period can't come out, it's stuck, why is it stuck? It was scar tissue in my uterus blocking anything from coming out. Asherman syndrome. If you don't know much about Asherman syndrome, I'm going to leave ashermans.org in the description. It is, a fun, it is a condition that is somewhat rare, but if you have it, it is detrimental to your fertility if you don't catch it. The doctor was amazing. He said, for my PCOS, we're going to start treating me with some metformin. I now take metformin regularly. He said, for your Asherman syndrome, we're going to need to perform some surgeries. And of course, I was apprehensive because earlier that year, I had had a DNC, and I do think the DNC contributed to the fact that I, now, I then had Asherman syndrome. Do I think I had Ashermans before the DNC? I do. I do think that somehow scar tissue was blocked up because when we had the surgery, I had the surgery in October of 2017. It was awful what he found in there. Surgery's done, and there was no endometriosis, no nothing. Well, there was. Are we calling it that? Hey, I don't know. Anyway, surgery's done, you got all the scar tissue out, and then I had scar tissue on my left ovary that was wrapped around that and my tube. And my colon, but he got it off. So now we're good to go. And I'm in a lot of pain. Look at my belly button. It's so big. And then I have a tube hanging out of mine. <laughs> <laughs> he said not only was my uterus just covered in scar tissue, the scar tissue bled out and was wrapped around my left tube, my left ovary, and my colon. It was so bad, he said, that he hadn't seen it spill out that far before. But I had the laparoscopy and hysteroscopy, and he cleared it, got it all out, and I was over the moon. I have some beautiful battle wound scars on my stomach and pelvic bone, but I'm grateful. And the way he found out that I had Asherman syndrome is through, was through a sauna histogram. I have videos all about my sauna histogram experience as well as my hysteroscopy and laparoscopy. They were hard to go through. My body had been through a lot, but we never kept our mind off of the goal. The goal was a healthy, living, breathing baby in our arms, and we have not lost sight of that goal. We know what we want and we're going to do anything we can to get there. So after surgery, you have to heal for a while. Like you've just gone through, your body's gone through a major trauma. 
Um, so we had to heal for two months, um, which was fine. So December 2017, I think is where we're at now, we hit our two year mark. And we were so excited because he said, okay, you said Fermera's worked for you before. I don't really do Clomid. I like Fermera. Let's put you on some Fermera and let's get you pregnant. Well, that did not go well. I had no follicles at all on my left side, which is the side I had surgery on to get it to work again. And I was so ready. Fermera had always worked for me in the past. And we put me on a pretty good dose and it, it didn't work. I had no follicles. Nothing. It was heartbreaking. Like what? I went from responding to Clomid then to the not. And then I went from responding to Fermera and then not. Why was my body working so hard against me at this point? I didn't understand. So we, we upped the dose of Fermera and we tried a few more times and it, it started working again when we really upped the dose. Hey babe, do you want to show them what's in that bag? Whole lot of nothing. Whole lot of nothing. <laughs> uh, finally. We got to pull the trigger this morning. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I had not one. And not two, but three follicles. Three perfect follicles. All in my right ovary, which makes sense because my right ovary freaking hurts. You can get in the frame because we're happy. Mm. So we pulled the trigger and now it's go time. Yep. It's on us. We got this. We got this. <laughs> no we're, more drugs. No more drugs. This has to be it. Oh, we're ready. Yeah. We're ready. We want this to be it. We want this to be it so bad. I think the most I had was three follicles, which which was a good number, and we tried and we failed. First response. Try to look. Not seeing anything. Can take the others. And then after so many rounds, I was, I was tired of it. And I, we had a conversation with our doctor and I said, we're ready to move on. We're ready for something more aggressive. We're ready, we're ready for this to be over. So they were on board they were like, yep, I think you're ready to do, I think you're ready, you're gonna be a good candidate for injections and you're gonna be a good candidate for IUI. And I said, okay, great, let's, let's freaking do the dang thing. So we started down that journey and we went to an injections class and we learned everything we had to know of the risks and the factors of IUI and injections and what it can do to you. And we, we just dove in head first. We were ready. We were like, yes, this is gonna, this is gonna be it for us. And doing the injections was hard for me because I was so, mad at my body for not working that it was to the point where I had to inject myself with meds to make it work and all all you want is just for your body to suddenly be like oh yeah I know what I'm doing <laughs> okay all right all right I can't okay and it's never been the case for me. My body has never figured it out. And we had, when you go into IUI and you start injections, you have to be fully ready and prepared for what could happen. And they told us, like, it is possible that you will overstimulate or you, are, you, or you will understimulate. And I said, that's fine. I understand. We have to try. We have to do trial and error. We have to figure it out. And so we did, and um, we found out that Volistim injections work really well on me. Too, too good, actually. Um, I had 15 mature follicles and about 30 others. So my ovaries looked about like the size of a basketball. So that was fun. Um, 
But yeah, so our very first IUI that we were so, so hopeful for was canceled. I, for some reason, I don't know if it was just we got so hyped up for IUI, like this is going to be it, that when things didn't go as planned or our way, it just crushed me, crushed me. And we were nearing the two and a half year anniversary of trying to have a baby. I've watched so many of my friends have babies. So many girls that have, that were, that came to me crying, telling me I had a miscarriage, I had a miscarriage, and I would console them because I understood and I've watched most of them have babies now. And I have it. We are not gonna give up. We know, we know that God has a reason for everything. And there have been times in this infertility journey that I've screamed at God, like, why? Why, 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 why me? Like, I just, I just want to say that after two and a half years of this, I'm tired of it. And I know the people that try for five, seven, ten years, I know you're tired. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being the sad girl, the infertility person. I think of how lucky I am. I've met a lot, a lot of cool people through this journey. A lot of them on YouTube, a lot of their Instagram, just through the comment section of my, of my videos. I've met a lot of really amazing people. And then I think to myself, well maybe this is why. Not a lot of people advocate for infertility. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be a voice because for some reason I can't shut my mouth about this because it sucks. Like, insurance doesn't cover most infertility. That sucks. A lot of people struggle with infertility. That's not fair. And a lot of people think it's taboo to talk about. And I'm over here like, I can't talk. I can't stop talking about it. And I don't think I will. That's kind of our story up until this point. And I'm so thankful for the subscribers and the amazing people that have come through this and that will continue because we will not stop documenting this even after we've beaten infertility because you know this is becoming a mommy channel once we're done. <laughs> I can't wait for the day that I get to sit here with somebody and to tell them how many people rooted for that, for them, whoever this is. <laughs> because you guys are amazing and you guys encourage me all the time to not give up and to keep going on the days where I just want to like curl up in a ditch outside and die. So, get myself together here, wrap this up. I just want to thank you guys for going down this infertility roller coaster with us. It's obviously not over yet. I am not pregnant. <laughs> And we will continue on this path. We will try IUI again. And if IUI doesn't work, we will go from there. We will figure out a plan. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap of the last two and a half years of my life. I feel like this video still doesn't do it justice because two and a half years feels a lot longer than the 30 minute video that this is. But yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.